me if it's working and we'll go from there moment i see something i will tell you this is the first thing they'll hear in youtube mm -hmm. let's pretend this is important <laughs> oh it's for oh over 18 maybe it's working hello people it is working. welcome to snuffsters third podcast calling it snuffcast 3 my name is candy bars and i'm here this evening with nico and with felon hi <laughs> Tonight we're going to be discussing a semi-broad range of topics, ranging from the Mega Man Legacy Collection. Uh, we're going to talk about Mighty Number no. Nine a little bit and all the delays it's been suffering from, Nintendo's incredibly ridiculous YouTube policies and copyright claims in general. Uh, YouTube gaming couldn't be a more broad subject if we tried. Uh, the Nintendo AVS uh, experimental console that never made it to production. Uh, the new Worms game. Uh, we're going to talk a bit about Capcom recently going up for sale. Uh, we'll be discussing the Mega Man 3 improvement hack and the improvements it's, it presents and if it's a better user experience or not. We'll be discussing the incredibly wide variety of Mega Man fan games coming out and why you should stop making them. We'll be discussing the AI system Mari I.O., that learned how to play some video games on its own, and we'll be discussing the new Mega Man 2017 animated series. So, did you got know, quite a show. You did, shut up. I'm not done talking. Did, did you know <laughs> that the AVS is actually going to come out in summer? But we'll get to that. No, it's not. It's not no, it's experimental. Not. You're experimental. I'll experiment you. Anyway, first topic of discussion, the Mega Man Legacy Collection. Now, I, I have to be honest, and, and I'm... I'm gotta say ultima i'm glad you're not here because <laughs> i i think the three of us in this room probably have one opinion of it and i know ultima has a very different opinion of it so uh we'll start with nico on this i think well the main issue so I, we'll uh, be here well oh yeah okay <laughs> i understand your viewpoint and i respect it somewhat i think the uh issue with me in legacy collection was it that it's uh, it had only the six games from the NES, yeah, and the anniversary collection uh, came out what twelve years ago. It had uh, the eight something games. like that, yeah. <laughs> and there was more. There was more than just there eight was more games. Content. I think wasn't there? Yeah. Uh, other videos or something. I think. It just I have it a hard time understanding. Stuff. Yeah, while we're here at the 30th, 30th or 35th, 30th anniversary, Yes. and this is what Capcom does. This is their grand overture to one of the most storied franchises in Nintendo's history, and it's a collection of ROMs in an emulator. I'm sorry, that's what it is, and it just, I, I don't know, I feel like they really could have done us one better, either by coming out with a new Mega Man game, or at least releasing... All of the legacy Mega Mans on one collection instead of just the first six. Yeah, people want to see a new Mega Man game. And what but do, do they get? really? We get this HD flair, new <clears> features <throat> such as leaderboards that definitely are not going to get hacked on the first two weeks. <clears throat> That's about how long it took. Yep, I told you guys. It's going to take two weeks. Mm -hmm. Some guy is going to do two second times there. And one thing, uh, mm -hmm. they included the challenges. But the problem with that is, because they're save states, uh, some of the RNG is completely taken out of the matter. Yeah, yeah. it's true. So the yeah, day, I guess... for example, the Shadow Man fight, I think, is the same every time. Correct me if I'm wrong. You're not incorrect. Because <laughs> I, I never bought the uh, Legacy Collection, because I wanted to see uh, how it played out first. You have it, don't you, Felon? I do actually have it, uh, and it is it really is just that. It's a, a bunch of save states where they have control over the health and a couple of the other variables, hence the challenges can teleport you from one challenge to another, and you literally almost seamlessly go from one game to another. Um, but it, it's still essentially save states just being loaded over and over. Um, it's hard to explain... But Would you say it's still worth the money uh, you paid for it? it? Well, here, here's the thing. If you if you don't own any Mega Man games and you want proper ownership over it, yeah, 
you know, buy it. I mean, mm. <laughs> that that's that's one way to own it if you can't get your hands on a physical cartridge now, because as we know, those are getting a little pricey. Um, the challenge modes are interesting, especially like the boss gauntlet run. But like I say, the whole save state thing, uh, it would be much better if there was a bit of randomization. Like if they could randomize the random number generators so that Shadow Man doesn't do the exact same thing every time or Needle Man does the exact same time. You know, even if it's it, an emulator, I, they could have done like, what, 20 different save states, save states at least and just randomize it somehow. And you could have done... You could have done that, or you could have uh, randomized the random number generator and then had that continually uh, transfer yeah. over to each different state. It wouldn't have been hard to truly randomize it. And that's that's the thing. I mean, trying to come up with a right way of saying this, but half mm -hmm. the appeal behind the, the challenge that the game offers comes from reacting to random scenarios. Not going, okay, he's going to jump here. Oh, he's going to do this. Yeah, because now all you have to do is memorize the fight. Pretty, pretty much. much. And do it the same way every time. And that's not what it's about. And I have to wonder, because there's, there's been a sudden explosion of speedrunners on YouTube. Everybody and their dog all of a sudden is now rushing to do these no-miss, perfect run damage, no damageless runs. And I'm wondering if they're not using some of these ROMs... Uh, in the uh, legacy collection emulator to do it that no. way because you don't think they could oh uh, well, not if they're doing it the way we do it i mean if it's a boss rush yeah it's going to be um through advantage of knowing uh that shadow man uh jumps twice and slides right at the very beginning of the fight but if you run through the stage no you are um playing victim to the actual rng yeah. okay well. So I guess the the issue isn't so much that the that the collection exists. It's just that it, for what for where Capcom is in in Mega Man's history, it just seems like they should have offered a great deal more. Yeah, no, they the, their promise what they were going to offer was never tr delivered. It's like um, it's like saying brand new high tech screen. It's just the same screen, but it's like. 20% bigger on that new phone that you just bought. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now coming up, Mega Man and mobile games. <laughs> well, that's exactly what we need. Oh, would, without any type HD of tactile player. feedback? No, they already have one, and it was critically... Um, uh, whatever the word that's opposite of panned means. <laughs> there is a mobile game? Uh, yes, let's there just, is. Let's... It's a Mega Man X... Getting... It's, it's a single <laughs> button that says fire, and it has Mega Man X running across a battle screen. And you just tap the fire button, and he shoots. Well, still That's better it. than the wristwatch games. <laughs> it's better than X7. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, Ooh, yeah. wow. Yeah, the development <laughs> cycle that went into that game was much higher quality. I'd rather oh. wear one of those wristwatch uh, games than play X7 again. I think I would, too. Hey, those were actually pretty cool. Well, okay, some Back of in the day. Cool. Most of yes, them didn't work them. for shit. Okay, now anyway, moving games. on. All right, uh, we pretty much shot that down. Moving on to uh, Vaporware number nine and its constant delays. Yeah, what did you uh, say? Vaporware? I've never heard of this I've game. I've never heard of this game. <laughs> Mighty Number no. Nine, because of it, because of its constant delays, I have consistently referred to it as Vaporware Number no. Nine, just because I'm not so sure that it's ever going to see the light of day. Although I did see that it finally got a release date uh, attached onto it. Went it went gold. Okay, what do you mean about finally? It's gotten 14 release dates so far. Oh no, but they're Always... for real this time, Nico. It's going to actually they happen. For real? It's going to happen. This is going to happen. You know, I, I completely forgot about Mighty Number no. 9 because of the delays. To tell you the truth, I don't even care anymore. What is this game even? I a... would have forgotten about it except for certain Twitch chat rooms I've been sitting in. People would be like, well, what do you think about Mighty Number no. 9? And everyone's like, well, the game's not even out yet. How can we form an opinion about it? I kind of wanted something more of like 8-bit style. It kind of looks... It doesn't look like my kind of game. So I'm kind of ignoring it. So far, I don't, don't know about you guys. 
I don't know what I'll do yet. I don't see myself playing it. Uh, I think it's just a little... It's one of those things now where it's no longer about the quality of the game. It's the principle of the thing. Uh, yes. Just to put it in... I mean, you know, they've said, you know, it's going to come out, it's going to come out, it's going to come out, and then they keep delaying it. And it wouldn't be quite so bad, except that they went for a GoFundMe for this, or whatever. I think it was GoFundMe. Um, well, what where, you know, people are, you know, trip, or chipping in money to get this game developed and put on the market. And... I've got to, I don't know, I just feel like if you're going to solicit for money from people before the game is even on the table, you better deliver. And I get it, you know, if they want things to be done right the first time. So, I mean, I understand why the delays, but they should never have said it's coming out at this point yeah. don't without make knowing for sure. If you're not yeah. certain about it. Don't make a release date that you can't stick to, and for damn sure, don't make 10, 12, 13 release dates you can't stick to. Well, it's, it's like us saying something will happen. Yeah. It's not going to happen. <laughs> We're not next six months. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know what? I'm going to be the devil's advocate here and go with the other side uh, and say that it is really, really hard to stick to an actual release date. Well, sure. I mean, well, like, like, let's take, for example, the fact that Mighty Number no. 9 exceeded all expectations they broke all their goals they're releasing on multiple consoles and so they're not just going to release one game um on a particular console ahead of all the rest they're going to release them all simultaneously the problem was that they they catered into that demand you know when's it when's it going to be ready i put money into this when's it going to be ready when's it going to be ready and they probably just you know, put an answer out just to, you know, stop the constant Maybe. question when it's going to be ready. And I'm not saying it's going to be a bad game. I just I'm just saying I like forgot about it, and I'm not paying attention to it. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's the principle now. I don't even know if I want to play it just because they've pissed me off so much with this. <laughs> I was actually kind of excited about it when it first got announced, and yeah, it was now it's like. Just to put it in perspective, here, here in Wichita, we have a really big food truck scene. I don't know if they have any of those in Finland or in Canada, for that matter, but food trucks are huge in the United States. And there is this Mexican food truck that has been highly recommended by everybody we know. They have a Facebook page and everything. They announce where they're going to be, this, that, and the other. Well, three times in a row, we tried to go visit this food, this food truck, but they were never where they said they were going to be. And there's a phone number on it you could call and ask. And they'd say, oh, we're over here. And I'm like, well, why isn't it on your website? This is where you're going to be. And they're like, oh, yeah. we're sorry. So after the third time, I'm just like, you know, no. And we finally found it one day. And my wife's like, well, do you want to go get something? I'm like, no. They they don't cater to their customers. They don't do what they're supposed to do. It's just I'm, I'm through with it. Well, I've only got so much patience for things. And they had exceeded that. Well, you know, that point, reminds like, me. when I get to play it, I get to play it, and maybe tonight I'll tell my experience about it. I'm not going to keep waiting on it. When it's out, it's out, and I'm going to play it, probably. We'll see. Yes. Well, I mean, one. Well, it reminds me of a story here in Canada. They did a... Uh, it's a CBC thing. Uh, I guess you can consider it something close to the BBC. Okay. You gotta really you you gotta really mute that mic when you uh, type. Sorry. Um, what are you talking about? So CBC Marketplace here in Canada um, had an article about uh, fake reviews, and they actually had this this uh, food truck, and they made it all up. It's not real, and they created all this advertisement for it, and oh, it's the greatest thing. And it's going to be here and here, and that's sort of what it reminds me of. It's just, but then again, you said you found it, so uh, obviously it's not the same thing. <laughs> well, I mean, I found it, and they had a long line, but that's you know, I was burned on the idea because they just they don't care about their customers, and I feel like uh, KG Unife is kind of the same way on this. He's just pissing on everybody. He's he's riding on the coattails of all of his fans, hoping for a little more extra time, and I just I'm deathly afraid. That regardless of the fact that all this time has gone by and that he's going to release on all consoles at one time, which I think is an incredibly bad idea, by the way. Um, I just I think he's setting himself up for failure. Yeah, well, I'm kind of scared. Don't forget, we're going to have to see. Well, you also don't forget that this is uh, his like first foray into the uh, pro developer market. He was yes, a game yes. designer, not a 
a head of a company. Right. Yeah, we're going to have to see how that plays out. Yes. I think that's pretty much yeah. uh, all we can say about Mighty Number no. 9. At this point, it's going to be released. That's well, point. well. We don't know <laughs> that for sure. It's going to be right. released in a month. Trust me, guys. It's that's, I'm out. telling you, it's for real this time. They set a well, date, and, okay. and they're going to stick to it this time. You, here's the thing. If you look online, there are actually complete videos of... Not so much complete, but the game is pretty much done. That much is now clear. It's just getting enough copies out to the public, the uh, electronic releases and all that stuff. There's a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff that we we don't know about or ever hear about. Well, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm going to play, play the game at some point. And I'll give my feedback. But I don't think I'm going to buy it on launch. I'm just going to see people suffer. <laughs> yeah, I'll gonna wait and inevitably watch the huge list of bugs that winds up being day one release issues and then... this, this, this game's too collection. hard this game's too hard <laughs> dude well, we you're actually... on the first screen there's no That's enemies on screen nothing nothing will will drive the snubsters to a, a Mega Man style <laughs> project more than saying it's too hard yes. so <laughs> that would be one way to guarantee that we play wasn't there a thing <laughs> you could add your own challenge to the game if you pay a sum of sorts and we were, we were supposed to add a no miss challenge to the game, but it kind of, we just kind of forgot about it when it got delayed and delayed. Yeah, it seems like there was a little point by that time. Pretty much. Anyway, moving on. on. Oh, no, you didn't. Yeah, yeah oh, oh, he, did. he went there. He, he went there. He said, it can't be worse than Mega Man 8. Uh, Mega Man 8 is a huge pile of, um, oh, wait, Something. are you filtering this out? I am interested <laughs> what uh, Philon has to say about Nintendo's YouTube policies. Yes. It hits me up with this. The YouTube policies? Yes. yes. First, you might, for the sake the, of our viewers, you might explain a little bit about what's going on. This one is a hard one to actually really talk about. Because, because you, when you think about it... No, 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 no. Think about it like if you were to create something, and then suddenly someone... Okay, let me give you a better example, and then I want to see how you guys would react. And then, and I'm not saying I defend Nintendo, I can see their dilemma. Snupsers makes a game, and one person buys that game, but then streams it on the internet for everyone to watch. Only one sale, but everyone loves your game, <laughs> and only one person has ever played it. Is that fair to you? And not to mention, this person is making money off your work when you are not no longer making any money. That is the complete other side of the story. There's two sides of this. But that's, that is so, possible. Like story-driven games, if people stream them, yeah, it's going to affect the sales because people are just going to watch the game and not actually buy it. Yeah. Now, that's that's sort of where I think Nintendo kind of lost focus is that they should have had more, you know, games that are action centric. You know, where playing the game uh, is more enjoyable than watching someone play it. Yeah, yeah, I've done that a couple of times. I just watch someone play a game. Yes. I buy it myself. That's but... kind of what's kept me from playing Undertale, even though I really do want to play Undertale. I've... I'm going to kind of wait until I've forgotten a bit of the story because I've watched so many people play it on Twitch that, I mean... I actually got there's... completely... I don't even know the story. The only thing I've seen is I... the uh, Peppers thing. You see, that's the problem. Is It's really hard to avoid that kind of stuff on the internet. You know, because especially if you're following like a YouTube celebrity that does Let's Plays and he plays all the latest stuff that comes out. And of course, if it's a a talked about game, you're going to see them play it. Yeah, pretty much. Well, yeah, the amount of people playing through like Dark Souls 3 or uh, The Division or Overwatch or any of those games, have recently, it's it's ridiculous. But I mean, that's but, what that's what everybody wants to see because it's the new hot thing. Yeah, but like I also said, you know, if it's more entertaining to play the game than it is to watch, then I wouldn't be concerned by the fact that, you know, someone's making money off your hard work well then maybe the onus is on the game company to make sure that they produce a game that is both fun to play and watch maybe didn't nintendo offer like the youtubers 
uh, some kind oh, of yeah, collaboration. The, yeah, yeah the, the, there's a partnership program. So yeah. if you want to make money, you can now do it legitimately <laughs> uh, by signing up for the Nintendo Partnership Program. And they will take a cut of your earnings. It's like using PayPal for your uh, services. They will take a cut. Pretty much. Uh, uh, or yeah, or here in the United States, we have a company called Ticketmaster. If you want to buy tickets for a concert, uh, Ticketmaster is a common place to buy the tickets through, and they charge a ridiculous fee for buying tickets from them. Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, Plays out at the end of the day. But the uh, copyright claims in general are just becoming a bigger problem by the day. <laughs> but this isn't this isn't a, a Nintendo problem. The copyright no, claims it's everyone's problem, frankly. Yeah, tell them a bit about your recent experience uh, with Silver Surfer, Nico. My recent experience: uh, I was playing Silver Surfer for two weeks, practicing for uh, no deads, no bombs run, and when I finally got to it. I released the video, no this, no bombs, and after five seconds, I got a message. Uh, there's a copyright claim on your stuff. Um, uh, it seems that you have stolen the footage of Cinemassacre. <laughs> and I'm like, what the Stop. fuck? <laughs> and there's, you know, you can click the timeline and see uh, where, they, uh, where they think you stole the footage. And it's just like, I'm playing the game and talking myself. This is not from Cinemassacre, this is not an AVGN episode. And I'm like, shit, what now? Do a video on it. Okay, spread it in Twitter. Okay, deal. And uh, Cinemassacre did message me through the video and said it's now been fixed. But the thing is, it got monetized. Like, before they even got to look at it. So a bot actually monetized my video. And uh, I don't think they actually got any money from it. Because they, I, I think they fixed that already. But it used to work like so uh, they would uh, get your money and you could say nothing to it. Just a really messed up situation. Which they've only just finally resolved. Yeah. And I've no I did read an article, I think it was on Kotaku of all places, and Nico knows my dislove for Kotaku. Yes. Um about a guy who had found a way around this process by he had like in his opening sequence of all of his videos he had things from like two or three different companies that all demanded like the major portion of sales from his videos. And he wasn't monetizing any of them, but they all wanted to monetize his video. And now they're all fighting each other to monetize his video. And yep, so they all yep. canceled each other out. Yep. So basically, yeah, he's, he's just, he's playing, let's see who wants to earn the money the most. I have no intention of making money off this video, um, but I will gladly uh, sit the sidelines out and watch this uh, fight back and forth. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's kind of funny because it's, it's he's basically playing the system, but it's it, I think it's ridiculous that it's got to come to that. And uh, Nico, I, have you seen chat? Yeah, I've seen it. I don't know what uh, talk to chat is. I have no idea what any of us know what that is or how to activate it. Well, I know what it is. I don't know where to activate it from. What is it? Uh, what it does is it uh, allows the user to select text the chat, I believe, so that they can have it, you know. Oh. Closed caption, basically. Yeah. I see. I don't know. Uh, You're the host. I think you would be the only one who has that option. I'm looking. You can go through the uh, YouTube gaming as I check this thing. What, uh, what about YouTube gaming exactly do we want to talk about it's but kind it's, of a broad subject it's just like the no, you i think the gaming. marketing went wrong with that because i don't even yeah. fully understand what it actually is and what it does and how you know how you can use it so it's just completely youtube gaming up the uh, thing it's just youtube's way to compete against twitch because they lost the bid and they weren't yeah, able to purchase yeah. twitch that much i know but but is it a better is... system than what twitch does so why would we use YouTube gaming instead of the normal YouTube? Like, I don't understand the benefits. YouTube, because it allows you to do it live, whereas with I've regular done YouTube... I've things live without YouTube gaming, uh, gaming. I've been in YouTube and done live sessions, and it didn't use game. You can actually select if you want to use YouTube or YouTube gaming for your live sessions. And I never selected YouTube gaming, so I have no idea what it does. 
I don't know that it really makes any difference. I think it probably changes who it pitches your video to in terms of when someone goes looking for content. Yeah, but how uh, many of people who use YouTube are in YouTube gaming side? To the best of my knowledge, not very many, because I think most people, I think Twitch pretty much has a lockdown on that yeah, right now. Uh, and there might it's be, be a, hard. it might, they might eventually become a, a competitive force, but so far as I know right now, it's about like using Google Plus as opposed to Facebook. Nobody does it. Oh, you went there. You went there. I went there. I don't know that it's, uh, like I said, maybe in a couple of years it might be a bit of a bigger deal, but right now. Yeah, it doesn't seem to be too much on anyone's uh, radar at the moment. No. No, something went wrong when announcing it's like it's I don't understand. Like I still don't understand what it is in its core. Okay, you can do it's, live sessions, it's, but it's mean... Twitch, but with YouTube. That's, that's all it is. Yeah, that's almost exactly what it is. Yeah, but I've never used the actual YouTube gaming side. Because I've done about 5 to 10 streams on YouTube. And you can select whether you want to stream it to YouTube ga uh, gaming or not. And I never did, so why would I? What's the benefits? I don't. I just don't. There get is the no benefit. I'm. I'm sure they may tout things like perhaps a faster upload speed, <clears> so that there's not as much of a uh, delay. Uh, well, that could be it. But why would they include the normal streaming thing at all? I don't know. Why didn't they just take it out and just keep YouTube gaming? I have no idea. I don't know what the benefits are. I've. Yeah, no intention of, of leaving Twitch for them because they've not said anything. Marketing just... fail. Exactly. I think that's exactly what it is. <laughs> well, we can't buy Twitch. How about we make this YouTube gaming and never talk about it again? Done deal. Pretty much. Pretty much. Anyway. ABS, Nintendo NES console. Let me show this to you. <laughs> this thing is really cool, and I'm sad that it never actually happened. But it's gonna come out in the summer. No, it's not. Y yes, it is. The Retro USB announced the AVS Nintendo NES HDMI Ready Clone Console, due for a summer release. Yes, indeed. I kind of <clears throat> like the uh, outlooks of it. The design is quite cool. I'm not sure how you, how easy it is to take the cartridge out. It kind of looks a bit fucking tight. I can see that might be a bit of wear and tear on your thumbs. <clears throat> Yeah, it's, Maybe. It's, the user experience. I don't see where it really looks all that much like the control deck from the original AVS. I mean, a little bit, I guess. But uh, the big thing is, is the AVS, the AVS as it was originally conceived, did not. Uh, uh, Nico, our mumble, hmm? our mumble is showing. Um, oh. The biggest uh -huh. thing about the AVS was. They were one of the first things to produce wireless controllers and wireless peripherals. There were not any wires for any of their controllers or anything. That's the first thing you see when you look at this. Is there's four big ass ports for uh, controllers. Yep. And the compatibility is actually pretty good, from what I've heard. And it actually plays Castlevania Three. That's the first test you always do. Does it play Castlevania Three? And if it does, it probably plays anything. So Why is Castlevania Three the big test? Uh, there's, I think there's a chip in it. I'm not sure if I completely understand what it does. Yeah, the, there's a lot of security lockout chips in the actual cartridges. Yeah, and Castlevania 3 is one of the hardest games to emulate for this uh, pur uh, purpose. So, well. I'm kind of weirded out by what this says. It says 720p. But it also says it, it's using the original NES hardware. And if it's using what? the or original hardware, how the fuck does it do 720p? There's some kind of converter. No, no what, what it is is it's, it's... A lot of the newer TVs don't accept the <laughs> signal from the old NES hardware. Yeah, that is and true. So what it does is it upscales it inside the hardware itself so that the TV doesn't have to have it built in. Oh yeah, so it's just up. So it's a built-in upscaler. Okay. So now I wonder if it's gonna look horrible or not. It probably depends on the inch count on your TV. 
say it's probably going to count on the TV, but I mean, that's it is good that they put in they've installed an upscaler inside the system itself because otherwise you have to buy one externally and that's a pain in the ass. Yeah, yeah. just to play the original hardware. The good thing is it's not a clone system. Uh, I, I wonder if that means the audio is going to be actually decent if it's built on the original hardware, hardware because a lot of the clone systems have horrible audio. That's one reason I'm Am I reading those. this right? It's going to cost $185. Yeah, that's uh, it's pretty steep. That is extremely steep for a retro system. You can go and now bring a lot of the yes, and just use the yeah. AV cables. I don't see now you can. There are a lot of other retro consoles that play many things more than just Nintendo games and Famicom games, and they probably are less than half that cost. I mean, you can get you can get them for fifty, sixty bucks. Yeah, you don't see it in the picture, but it actually has a top loading Famicom slot as well, and that's pretty cool. Yep. I think. and that's. Partly the reason why it costs so much, I think. Just for Maybe. the luxury of it. And it has the four score uh, built in, as you can tell from the uh, front. And what the uh, hell is a Famicom expansion port? I'm not that familiar with Famicom. Well, Un the, underneath uh, I the... Go ahead, Felony. That's right. The underneath the uh, Famicoms, all the original ones, not the, uh, the latest models that came out. Yep. There was an expansion port to expand the actual hardware capabilities, such as improved RAM um, or whatever functionality. I think originally it was designed to actually support a modem for online play. I think play. The, the original thing is they when they first, when the original AVS was first announced, it was going to have keyboard support, just like the Japanese Famicom was. And I think when they adapted to just release the control deck instead of everything else that port was they were still considering the idea of having keyboard support for it and that was i know one of the things that was going to be able to be in, uh, put down there but yeah he was like ram and a bunch of other things i didn't know about the modem uh i knew there was an aftermarket one where you could play <clears throat> like cross system on a couple different games yeah but i don't think that ever went anywhere i remember seeing an ad for it in a magazine it is also stating that it supports cheats, so something like Game Genie would actually work wonders on this as well. Yep. I wonder if, can you, if you can plug in the original Game Genie on that. I don't see why uh, not, because I don't think you, you have to have the door closed to, to use it. But it, it, the problem is it angles the cartridge, so I, hmm, I'd have to have another look at it. But it I don't it, know that it actually is for sure. Yeah. It, I'm kind of surprised they don't have a wireless controller support. Online scoreboard. So I wonder if that's something that speedrunners could actually take advantage of. Or whatever that means. Like online scoreboard. I don't understand yet. The complete works. I'm curious how they would implement that. Yeah, because it's, An not, interesting it's concept. not extracting the cartridge, it's cartridge ROMs. It's just playing so... the, like the original NES. So how can you have... Something yeah, like it doesn't cop It doesn't um, extract it and put it into memory, and then you can freely unload the cartridge. Yeah, that's so that means it's got online support. That's an interesting thing. You know, that would be actually pretty cool. You play Ice Climber with someone from Brazil or something. That, that actually, would be cool. Yeah, that would uh, totally uh, pay for itself. I think. So Sounds yeah, like um... a secret dream of yours. Do you want a stumpster from Brazil? Uh, yes. <laughs> We Only if she's guy. about six feet tall with incredibly long legs and beautiful bronze skin. <laughs> How did we get? To are that we talking point? about? Are we? Are we talking about a snapster here or something else? <laughs> well, <laughs> if we're gonna dream, may as well go big, right? Yes. There is a new worms <laughs> game coming out. There is. And funnily enough, uh, let me bring it up here. It's funnily enough. There has been 19 Worms titles after Armageddon, and Armageddon 19? is still, yes, and Armageddon is still the best one. It is still the best Worms game, but I probably can't show this to you fully because I'm going to get copyright claimed again, but I'll show you screenshots of it. So it kind of looks like this could become something. This is the first time I actually think the game looks okay. Uh, not like Worms 3D. Uh... <laughs> did you guys ever play Worms 3D? I'm curious. No, I did not. It's probably a good choice. The game sucks. 
And so did every other uh, yeah. 19 titles after Armageddon. People still play Armageddon. There's like 100 people there every day playing. Friendship destroying tactics. Yep, that sounds right up our alley. Yep. And this game actually has vehicles. I'm not sure how they are going to impl implement this, but kind of looks cool. Well, I think probably part of the biggest appeal with Worms Armageddon is just the gameplay factor, and it's it's simple and yet it compl complex all at the same time. It's easy to pick up, and yeah, it's really just going to matter of how this one compares to that. I'm just hoping they are doing it right this time, like have the uh, ninja rope physics from Armageddon. And just don't <laughs> have any the ninja shit. rope. Yep. It's one of the I mean, most important things about the Worms franchise. I'd be perfectly happy if they did not include the Ninja <laughs> Rope. Just because you couldn't use it. <laughs> well, I see where you're coming I, from. I, I do somewhat agree with that statement there. Uh, um, 3D has ruined a lot of good guys just by being forced to be 3D. Yeah. You know, there was a, actually a good Worms type game on the PlayStation. It, it was called Hogs of War. It was actually Pigs doing the same thing but in 3d that game was phenomenal i'll tell you that much uh, much better than worms 3d was i just uh, kind of want to get the game again if you haven't heard mm -hmm. about it go check it out what does the page actually say oh 21st anniversary are she so looking forward to that Capcom for sale? This, I gotta say, does not surprise me. No. Uh, they've not really put out anything earth-shattering last, I don't know how many years, really. I don't even know what their last truly big title that they released was. I uh, think they're still doing some Dead or Alive games in Japan. And this doesn't mean you can buy Capcom. You can buy 50% of the shares. Yeah, we could go buy shares, yeah. not that I would want to, but... No. But this could potentially make it so that Mega Man could have a reason to exist again. But do we really need another Mega Man? No. Do we really need another fucking Legacy Collection? No. <laughs> and that's wait, kind of my I point. Want another, I want another Legacy... Oh, wait. <laughs> Mega Man Legacy you Collection 2 includes Mega Man 7 <laughs> and 8. <laughs> An <laughs> HD player. <laughs> and randomized, finally, randomized RNG. <laughs> Features also X6, X7, and X8. You know, honestly, I would be happy if they were to actually re release the original six games with the actual bug fixes. Yes. Do, but, do what but the guy did we'll for get... the hack, the Mega Man yeah. improvement version. Yeah, which we will we'll talk get about shortly. That... Yeah, we'll talk about that momentarily. Yeah. Go ahead. So yeah, Capcom being for sale. Well, not really for sale. It's just a misleading title. It's a clickbait. It's a, yeah, of course. Um, just like Snapsters is for sale. Click on stuff. <laughs> you can. <laughs> nobody's gonna buy this fucking channel. <laughs> Nobody in their right <laughs> mind. Um, it is definitely a sign of the time. I mean, even Konami is uh, struggling. A lot of the game developers of our era, um, by our era meaning the Nintendo Classic 8-bit era, mm. um, are struggling to continue uh, keeping afloat in today's gaming Xbox. Um, uh, well, Nintendo... Keep the flute. The... Sometimes, you know what, changing the formula is a good thing, but when all you ever do is try to innovate and try to innovate and try to innovate, you're going to run into more duds than anything else. <coughs> yes. Does Candy have anything to add to this? Sorry, I had my phone had it on mute while I was typing. I think the same sort of thing has essentially happened with Konami. Because uh, they've dumped all their major titles. They're not going to do any more Castlevania. They're not going to do any more... Uh, they, well, they said they're going to do another Metal Gear, but I don't know if they will. But it's their... Metal their, Gear. They're changing Sorry, from the there. console market to doing like pachinko games and mobile games and things like that. They're getting out of uh, the console business. So, I don't know. Maybe we're seeing the death of the mega companies. You know, 
Uh, yes. Bungie, I think, it kind of went the same way. Things uh, are going to end at some point. EA well, is kind of on the Bungie, same road. Bungie didn't really end up that way. There was... Was it a... We're getting off topic. I'll, I'll you get you get back to it. Like Ubisoft, but I mean, I'm saying is all the big companies are kind of taking a nosedive. And I think it's because they, they're so rigidly structured in how they do things that they don't know how to adapt. Mm. And Konami is now trying to do that, but it's too little too late, I think. Meanwhile, little companies and in indie games yes. developers are rising. We like like Shika Rocks and saying in the chat, it's all it's the rise of the indie developer, pretty much. Oh yeah. So, it, it's not so much just the rise of the indie developer. It's also the fact that let me explain it real quickly this way: games that were independently created for the pure enjoyment of the creator are the better games than games that are created just to try and get a market share to make money. And by that I mean uh, use Counter-Strike as a perfect example, or if you want to go so far as to say Dota, Defense of the Ancients. They were modifications on another game engine. Mm -hmm. They were a game that were created by the authors because they wanted to play that style of game. They wanted that game. They made it happen. It wasn't just, oh no, we've got to come up with another Mario title. Get on it. Yeah, talking about the new Mario titles, if you die five times on the stage, they give you a, a star that makes you uh, invincible. <laughs> that's that's where we are at this point. Pretty much. I don't know, I, just, I get so sick of it. Like Seeing the games like Dota or uh, what's the other one? League the of Legends. League of Legends or even what's the uh, uh, the Blizzard one? Uh, League. The, that's uh, something of the storm something of the storm heroes of the storm yeah oh yeah it's, I, I mean <laughs> and now the electronic gaming league has completely built themselves around these games and i think they're like a blight in video gaming but that's just well, my I, personal opinion I'm, we're I'm, getting off I'm, topic but i'm i'm gonna shoot down one little bit quick bit of information for you uh league of legends was actually created by some of the co-founders of the original dota Yes. Yes. So I think I they're that. not they're not riding on go tails of a game and just you know making they 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 have every right to make the game that they did. Anyway, Mega Man Three. So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Mega Man Three improvement hack. I I got a chance to mess around with this some uh, I guess about a month ago whenever we were talking about doing a video for it, and I have to say I'm pretty impressed. It, yeah, to like, me, it yep. plays like a whole different game. We were originally going to do a uh, an episode of it, but I think uh, it would become too boring to watch. So well, it's yeah, just... it just look like regular Mega Man 3 because you can't see the improvements. It's mostly in, in how the game plays and feels. I mean, there's some graphic enhancements too, I think. But... Well, apparently there's now an intro as well. Yes. The there, there's there's stuff you can definitely show in that. Because don't forget, it's... Mega Man 4 was the first game to have an actual backstory of what things actually happened. No, Mega Man 2 uh, had backstory, but it wasn't um, an animated intro, so to speak. Yeah, well, that's what I mean. M well, Mega Man 1 had a story, but it was in the uh, manual. In the instruction manual. Uh, Dr. Wright created... Wait, Dr. <laughs> Wright? Yes, Dr. Wright. Dr. Yeah, Wright put on his lab coat and got six men to try and kill this blue guy. <laughs> it is now you who must defeat the yeah. game. That's well, here, here's the... Translations. Here's the thing about Mega Man 3 Improvement Hack. While most of the game is hard to actually show the differences for, uh, you will notice one thing almost immediately. And that's the uh, leg almost being completely removed from the game. Uh, this allows for the actual good use of things like the Gemini laser, which, as we know, is called the Lego laser. <laughs> oh, yeah. So they apparently and, fixed that as well. Yep, they refixed the engine so that it doesn't um, uh, start to really stutter speed-wise. Let me see. Um, me and the, the and then... Page. And the shoots in um, Sparkman stage, you know, those little dropping blocks, what you jump through and all of a sudden it gets really slow. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's uh, been uh, fixed as well. Oh, and believe it or not, uh, Sparkman's fight is actually harder too because 
he actually does not slow down. Oh, yeah, oh, that yeah, lag that's... kind of factors into the fight. <laughs> because the lag is reduced a whole lot. I yeah, see. and uh, Gemini Man is actually made harder as a result of it, too. As if he wasn't hard enough already. Ooh. And also, the... No, he, he wasn't. And we they... all know how much uh, Lady loves Gemini Man. She's in love with Gemini Man. <laughs> Well, well, that's because when she gets tired these, uh... of one of them, she can just toss him to the side and get the other one. <laughs> <laughs> one of the bigger changes is as well, you can uh, fire three bullets instead of two when you're using yes. the I, like I never noticed that when I was playing the original game. But, uh, yep, there's only two shots. Sense. The and... uh, glitch on the on the stage select screen at the bottom of the screen, that little... Yep, fixed. <laughs> Yep, and um, you can't, uh, you actually can now actually uh, pause while weapon is on screen, much like all mm -hmm. the later games after 4. Isn't... Well, you, after 3, sorry, 4 started it. Can't you also uh, weapon switch with the select button? That's interesting. Yep, you can weapon switch. I didn't ever and, try that. And you can go back to stages you beat so mm -hmm. that you can get E-Tanks. Yep. Or to beat Needleman again, if you uh, really feel like that. I did not know this. Talk about we should use this uh, RAM hack for our deranged because of Wood and Quick Man. So we can go back and get the yep. attacks. Mm -hmm. And the controller too, uh, debug mode is completely disabled. <clears throat> just how it was meant to be. So they just yeah. left it in uh, by accident. It is not a cheat. On the, if you... Yes, it is. No, it's not. No, it's debug not. Mode. The... Um, the second controller being able to control uh, jumps and all that stuff is a common uh, feature among every single game that they develop. It's a debug mode on the second controller, and they forgot to disable it in Mega Man 3. Yeah, because they wanted to what? test the game before releasing it, but they forgot the thing in. <laughs> well, clearly they didn't test it very much. <laughs> they didn't test it. it. Well, that testing. whole... The, the, the game was incomplete. It was rushed out the door. <laughs> Which is why Capcom is now for sale. <laughs> oh yeah, because they set this whole they sale up, up Mega from Man Mega 3 Man 3. Back in 1990-91, whatever it was. But you guys uh, forgot the most important thing. Rush which actually is... wags his tail. It's the most oh, important shit. feature. Shit. Mega Man 3 is now a happier game. Yes. With a happier Rush. Say when I cut you. <laughs> I'll take this as a note. That's all we got to say about that. That's no, we just did the Mega Man and three improvement hack in three minutes instead of two hours of gameplay. I'm proud of our, uh, ourselves. That's uh, got to be some kind of record. Yes. Well, you know what? We should do one more thing then. We Which should we... also uh, show people where they can download this. I He's been showing. Way. Yes, I just. It was on the page if you'd been paying attention. Yeah. Mm, no, not paying attention. Sorry, where where are we? Are we just having a casual talk again? Mega Man fan games coming out left and right. Oh my god. Uh, Please stop. Okay, uh, yeah. I want to hear Candy's <laughs> <laughs> statement first. First of all, let me let me get this. Let me put this out on the floor where everybody can see it. There are some very very good. Mega Man fan games out there, especially you know games like Mega Phil X, and there's uh, Quench Revenge, which I know Nico hates, and Super Fighting Robot. There are some really good ones out there. Yes. However, there are a whole metric fuck ton more of really, really bad ones. It's funny that when Mega Man have Unlimited no business out. being out. When Unlimited came out, people started doing <laughs> fan games for some reason. And let me tell you, Mega Phil X is the right person to do it. He knows how to design levels, how to make the flow actually work in the games. And he actually had original ideas, good designs, good level designs, good bosses, everything is perfect. But now, yeah, every he did kid just on a the bunch block, of palette every, swaps. Yeah, every kid on the block is now doing palette swaps and think that that's how you do it. If you don't know how to make a game, don't make one, please. There's too many of them now. It just seems well, like it's no, the no, new no, hot no, fad no. now. But let's correct that statement just slightly. If you don't know how to make Mega Man games, um, get someone that does know uh, how Mega Man games should feel and get them to test your stuff before you release it to the public. 
<coughs> or come visit the Snubsters. We'll tell you. <laughs> we'll tell you about your game. Really oh, I fast. see what you did there, Phil. <laughs> Correction, <laughs> correctional <laughs> statement. <laughs> I completely understand. <laughs> yeah, get some people who know Mega Man to test your game out first. Can't yes. think of any right now, but uh, I'm sure you'll figure it out. <laughs> but yes, the the good ones that are out there, I think, are the reason why we don't really need. Uh, Capcom anymore. It's kind of been placed under the hands of the fans, and in guys like Mega Phil X and whoever did uh, Super Fighting Robot, it's been delivered. I mean, I really Mr. think Weird they guy. are they are better experiences on the whole than I think anything Capcom would put out right now. And the funny thing is, uh, Mega Man Unlimited is one of the best Mega Man games out there. It's actually yes. better than some of the originals, like 5 and 6. It is. Totally yes. better. Although, to be fair, it doesn't take much to eclipse 5 and 6. <laughs> it doesn't, yeah. I would go so far as to say Unlimited is better than 3. I, no. would, I would, I might be on board with that. No, because Mega, be Me Mega Man Unlimited would not exist without at least without 3. But it did everything better. Is what I'm saying. Because it introduced one of the greatest features of any Mega Man game ever. The slide. Yep. And then it became the charge buster and everything was forward. Downhill from there. Well, you yeah, know, I... it, it does raise an interesting um, thing when you say better than four. I went there, blah, 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 charge buster. The, what was it? Uh, we were actually talking a bit about it, how um, the casuals were starting to drive uh, games becoming easy. Like the Mega Man games, like easy mode for Mega Man mm. 10. Oh, yeah. But I think uh, uh, if you really want to make a fan game, do research, study some stuff. Don't just use the same Mega Man engine that everyone uses. And if, that results in 50 Mega Man fan games being completely identical with the same and all engine, sucking. the same levels, with the same designs. It is and for my fans. part, and this may be selfish on my part, but for the love of God, get some damn good music. <laughs> don't get some of the bullshit like uh, some of the music that i watched uh majoric play through the hard hat stuff and i thought i was gonna slip my own wrists because the music was just so god awful usually Please. people just uh, rip the music from other games yeah and i wish they wouldn't do that either if you're gonna mm. if you're gonna put music in a game if you're rehashing a robot stage that's already been done just reuse that music don't try to steal music from somewhere else and pretend like it's new Film, gonna say something. Well, uh, I was going to say, getting uh, music composers to create huge original soundtracks is actually quite difficult. It is. A lot of the composers that... Well, Megaphil X did some of his own soundtrack, but I'm the majority of it... got the music in his game. Well, yeah, but it was, it was... For Kevin... For, um, Kevin, I for can't recall his, uh, yeah, his last name. But he did some of his own as well, and I think there was a third musical artist in the uh, music as well. And what I'm basically saying is that it's really hard to get music, so sometimes you do have to use the original, and there should be no shame in that. Absolutely. And I'm just saying it can be done if you really yes, want. Yes, it can be. But it as, if it done. comes it's down to done. it, the choice between terrible new music or using the original stuff, just use the original. Yeah. Save, save our ears the trouble. And I don't just steal uh, music from like your favorite anime show or whatnot and put it in there. No. Yeah, yes. we, we know we know where a lot of the music comes from. The, the internet is a resource to everyone. I forget what uh, somebody was playing one of the hacks and uh, there came across a tune from Macross, my favorite anime, and I'm like, that's that doesn't even come close to fitting what what's on the screen. Yeah. Mega Man Unlimited did everything right. Like everything so, is completely. Now let's right. let's get Nico's head out of Mega Phil's ass, and it's we've we beat. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Nico's head is completely <laughs> in so Mega Phil's ass. Mega Phil, Nico wants to marry you. He does. He he's afraid to say it, but really. He wants you to be his boy toy, or to be your boy toy. I think he'd rather swing from your nutsack. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll just go test the new 50 fan games that came out today, and I'll come back to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so anyway, there's that. 
Now let's move on to something that I've been really excited to discuss. Uh, Mar IO. Uh, Nico, do you have a link for anything on that, or am I, are we just? Uh, I do have a link. Talk. But I'm not going to show the video because we're going to get banned from YouTube. I'm going to no, show clips. You, you, it's going to get a video. You have match. a couple. You have. Uh, oh, never mind. Yeah, you're right. I can't show the actual video. Well, we we, we can clips. we can link to it. You can watch it. That way, you give the original author the uh, the views. Um, the concept basically is that uh, Mario is a AI that was designed to play Mario. Yes. And the thing is, uh, he was streaming live when they very first started doing it. And for the first 40 minutes, all it did was run forward in a straight line and hit the first enemy it came to. And I was laughing my butt off because I'm like, there's no way this is going to work. I didn't think it was ever going to do anything but just keep running right and running into the first enemy it sees. Well, they posted a video on YouTube later on that showed kind of a time lapse. I think it was over 24 hours. Uh, Felon, correct me if I'm wrong. I think it was 24 hours. Yeah, something hours. like that. And it, it, it actually had beat the level. It finally it beat the level. It kind of did a very unorthodox way of doing it. But I was actually kind of impressed to see that the AI had learned enough to know where it needed to jump and what it needed to do to, to actually beat the level. So how is this different to the, uh, I forgot what it was called in HEDQ, the NES uh, bot? Taskbot? Yeah, Taskbot. Because, because Taskbot is actual human input. Oh where yeah, so AI, it records your input, I see. And this actually and then learns how to play. Yeah, it learns from mistakes. I see. And wa watching it in real time, it's, it's kind of a slow process. And like I said, it, it gets kind of frustrating to watch because it doesn't seem like it's really learning anything. But over time, it uh, eventually it figures things out. Now, there's yeah, another, managed, another system managed, out there, and sorry. I don't know which what it's called. I forget the name of it, but someone was showing it. What it was, they were showcasing different games where the, the bot watches you play for like a minute. And then it goes from there. And it figures things out its so own. Now, Grant, it's not so good at a lot of games that aren't linear, but games like, say, Contra or Super Mario Brothers that kind of have a linear layout, it was able to, to do those reasonably well. But you stick something like a Wall Street Kid or Final Fantasy or Legend of Zelda in there. Like it, He tried to get to play Legend of Zelda, and it kept pausing like every five seconds to see if it had more Triforce yet. Did you say Wall Street Kid? Yes, Wall Street Kid. <laughs> Make it play. Are you, uh, uh, are you judging me? No. <laughs> Make it we play always, some of the board games you. for NES. I'd like to see that. Always, uh, house always wins. <laughs> well, it could be like those chess programs, and if it can't find a winning move, it just <laughs> sits there forever and says, <laughs> "All right, uh, yeah, um, uh, I'm still deciding. <laughs> yeah, I'm really thinking this one hard." And then basically two days later, you come back and you're like, I give up, wait for the computer to actually make a move. It's like one yeah, of those... the bot that I was, sorry, the bot that I was talking about that learns from the way you play. He had it play Tetris, and it would get all the way to the top, and it would pause the game and stop because <laughs> it knew the only way to win was to not play anymore. It's like one of those flash yep. games that you can't beat. The AI yes. always wins, no matter what you do. And you're just <laughs> there trying for two days. You can't beat this. Uh oh. It's interesting. I'd like to see more it is. Uh, it, progress of this. It's interesting, but I already know one fatal flaw that the program's going to have, and that's dealing with RNG elements right yes. out the gate. Totally. Yeah. Um, if you were to give it a different scenario every single time, but there's no way that it would learn because it's uh, it learns and it basically just mimics. The, it how should I put it? It's kind of like a baby. You know, it uh, touches something hot and goes, ow, 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 that mm -hmm. hurts. And then it never touches that again. Unless but sometimes... Some... <laughs> <laughs> unless, you're, unless you're Nico Tholen. <laughs> <laughs> and um, Explains sometimes... Explains a lot, really. Yeah. And sometimes <laughs> you do need to... Sometimes you need to touch that hot item to beat a level. But because it learned that it's hot, it will never go to that again, therefore making it impossible to ever truly learn because well, yeah, some of the coolers you, in order for it to be able to be successful on multiple platforms you'd have to teach it a series of behaviors not to memorize the game but games like Gradius is, is totally doable that yeah. yes be, that anything that learned. anything without rng elements to it
Yeah, I, I, in fact, I used this tool for my Silver Surfer run. Yeah. <laughs> it took it a mere two years to learn <laughs> <Nico> it. But... <laughs> but... but I just, uh, the, the whole thing that I wanted to show that for is wouldn't it be interesting if they could create a Mega Man game where the Robot Masters adapted to your play style and became more challenging because of how you played? Oh, so you would first record your own gameplay and the machine would learn how you play the game. <clears throat> yeah. Which, I mean, I guess you could you could spoof it by playing it really terrible the first time through and then just go balls out the second time. But, I mean, if you were if it was an honest playthrough, or maybe over over time, as you played it over and over again, the, the AI just got continually better and better to the point, you know, six months down the road, seven months down the road, you might have a game that you can't beat. So you'd, you could use the tool for our Snuffster season races. And you'd, you don't even have to practice, just make the PC do it for you. <laughs> I don't need to practice for Mega Man 8. I'll become good in two months. <laughs> I'll have yes. a chance to beat someone. Yes. No, you cannot beat me. I am perfect. <laughs> On another note, I can't bring myself to practice Mega Man 8. Oh my Neither can God. I. I hate it so bad. We're just gonna have to do it at some point. Anyway, I win. Yes, you do. Our last topic of today in the animated series Mega Man 2017. Oh my god. Do you wanna I'll, I'm gonna open this up with one question. Why must we continually try to reinvent the wheel? Yeah. Like That's my only thought on yeah, this whole matter. It's it's the not point. reinventing the wheel. It is appealing to an audience <laughs> that doesn't um have any interest in it, or they're trying to so broaden the audience. Wheel. Do what Capcom no, no. did when I started. Uh, Mega Man one through six, keep the formats, but do slight changes. Just don't add any jump mechanics. <laughs> it took you a while always comes back to the jump mechanics <laughs> first image what do you think about this design I think it looks stupid I'll be honest kind of reminds uh, me I, of Mighty Number no. 9 maybe I'm just stuck on old Mega Man maybe I'm just I, maybe I'm not adapting to change here but I just I really do think it looks stupid but don't yeah. forget they're not trying to appeal to you they already have an on audience they think they do they could lose me just as quick. See, here's the thing that upsets me the most. Does, does everyone remember the movie Sin City? Yes. Yes. Does anyone know how closely it stayed to the source material? Nope, because I never read the book. Probably didn't, because they uh, booked the Never movie. mind, then. Well, no, I, never I, mind under, then. I understand the concept you're talking about, because I do know, like, in the case of Jurassic Park, the movie is nothing like the book. It only very loosely follows the book, but I think they were both excellent. I'm not <clears> saying that you can't have a good product and it be an offshoot of something that already exists. I'm just saying that I don't see anything here that's really like genre defining or breaking or really blazing any type of trails. They're just they're changing up the origin story. Really, but you have misunderstood what... something here. It does say aimed at kids uh, 69 as well as parents who grew up playing the video games. So it is aimed for us. Oh, yeah. Well, it, but it's going to get us just on the name alone. Yes. Is it? That's what I was uh, getting at. <laughs> so I'm a huge Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles fan, but I don't watch the new cartoon because it's so radically different than the cartoon I grew up with. Well, that's because they already lost you uh, many, many cartoons ago. Many, many moons ago. Hey. What I'm guessing again in that is that there's nothing wrong with staying true to the source material. You know, yes, okay, I've seen it before, blah, blah, blah. But that's what people want to go and see sometimes, right? Yeah. Um, look at Super Mario All-Stars. Did they change much in the levels? No. Did they uh, improve the graphics? Yes. Did they improve the sounds? Yes. And it was still a very w uh, well-received game without any major change. Yeah, they even included the Japanese Mario 2. They did. Yeah, Lost Levels. Yeah. So, I mean, there's you don't have to reinvent the wheel to make a good product, and that's what I'm getting at. Sin City stayed very, very close to its source material. Not exact, but it stayed incredibly close to its source material and was actually well-received because of it. Yep, you heard it, uh, Mega Man animated series creators, whoever you are. I, oh, wait, I did they, see don't, where he they don't work for Capcom people. anymore. He, uh, the guy, one of the guys who I guess was writing the new series, did respond to a bunch of uh, the hate mail they've been receiving. 
course, it's basically just along the lines of just, you know, wait and see for yourselves. You know, don't judge it before you've seen it. And we think we've done a good job, et cetera, et cetera. And just, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry. If I'm put into a position to direct or write a screenplay or a TV series based on a very hot property that's got a very well-established timeline, I'm not going to change any of those elements. You know, Cough, Ghostbusters, cough. <laughs> thank you. Thank Ouch. you. Thank you. I'm so not seeing that. But it's, you know, there's no point. There's, you have then alienated at least what I would guess to be at least a third or possibly even as much as half of your potential fan base because you've gone and thrown all the existing history out the window. Hmm. And I'm not uh, opposed to the idea of retelling it and changing things slightly, but you've completely altered, in this case, who Mega Man is, how he came to be, what he's doing, why he even exists. And don't and... forget, here's Mega Man's sidekick. Yeah. Okay. So So who's this guy? And why does we why does we care? Because English Why does we? You, you know, <laughs> Capcom has one title that was a reinvention that stayed true to its original formula and was very, very well received because of it. Oh, maybe they Resident are trying Evil to make it like Astro Boy. Mega Man, yeah, yeah, Astro Boy. Um, the Resident Evil remake. Oh, yeah. Uh, that was very well received and it was it stayed pretty close to the original material. <laughs> Following on Lady's comment about the whole Astro Boy thing, they had that uh, uh, versus fight where it was Mega Man versus Astro Boy and Astro Boy beat Mega Man's ass. So maybe that's why they're trying to make it more like Match. <laughs> No, you think they watched Ultimate Ultima was very upset about that. <laughs> yeah, but you see, that's the the problem with those versus series. <clears throat> they don't allow for any variables. They just say, you know, in a one on one situation with all cir um, circumstances uh, fixed, this issue would win. But you know, every single fight is not a uh, a win loss. Sometimes there are certain variables that come into play that can change the entire tide of victory. Talk about the logo. It's been done in Photoshop in five seconds. Just showcasing it here for your enjoyment. That's just horrible. That's looks like something a five-year-old would design. Hey, I, I, I spent a lot of time on I mean, I'm, I'm not doing <laughs> yes. anything. Logo design, Chris. Off the bat. <laughs> well, I think that's uh, pretty much wraps it for today. Uh, we'll hopefully come back next week and same bat time. Same bat channel. Uh, copyright material. Oh no, <laughs> copyright claim. Your video has now been banned in everywhere. Well, reset. <laughs> reset. Well, gonna do uh, the podcast again. Do it all over again. <laughs> Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.